the Aviation Operations Specialist performs duties which are crucial to safe and successful mission accomplishment within the Army's aviation branch. Soldiers in this MOS work in base and flight operations, the hub of activity in an aviation unit, whether it's operating on a fixed base or deployed during combat. Responsible for receiving, processing, and dispatching vital information to aviation unit, air crew, and aircraft operations, aviation operations specialists are subject matter experts and must perform quickly and accurately, executing operation functions that directly and indirectly affect the success of both training and real-world missions. We're the checks and balances, so when the paperwork comes to us, it's important that we make sure and we focus and we hit on it every possible aspect we can. We don't want them to get on an aircraft and not have enough fuel to land and possibly be in danger. We just want everybody to be safe. Duties include providing pre-flight planning assistance to crews for flight safety, such as METAR weather reports, hazard maps, and air coordination or tasking orders, as well as checking flight plans and manifests for completeness and accuracy. During a mission, aviation operations specialists track all aspects of a flight, such as estimated and actual times of departure and arrival, and estimated time en route. They communicate directly to the air crew with weather and mission updates and other critical safety information, and monitor the air crew frequency during flight in case of emergencies, unexpected delays, or precautionary landings. This career field is best suited for those interested in technology and information management. Candidates for this MOS must be detail-oriented and strive for accuracy, and must be able to think linearly and communicate clearly. You really need attention to detail. We need to make sure everything is correct. If it's not correct, we need to make sure it gets corrected before we even hand out those keys. If something was to go wrong, it's on us. It's our job. After successful completion of basic combat training, you will attend eight weeks of advanced individual training at the U.S. Army Aviation Center of Excellence. There you will learn Army aviation operations and record keeping, including administrative tasks that require detail, scrutiny, and the ability to research and cite regulations or other guidance. This course will challenge your technical knowledge using advanced computer-based systems to track and display vital flight planning, tracking, and monitoring information. After completion of all training requirements, you will be eligible for assignments supporting aviation units around the world. This job can prepare you for a civilian career because it gives you the foundations of transferring over to being a civilian dispatcher if you wanted, regardless of how long you fulfill your term, whether it's two years, four years, 10 years, whatever you would decide. You are multitasking, you are solving problems, you have to think quick, you have to be able to react. Employers love that. An essential member of the Army Aviation Team, the Aviation Operations Specialist, above the best. Good morning, I'm Staff Sergeant McCoy, and this is your introduction to the 15 Papa course. So a 15 Papa is the checks and balances of the admin of the aviation world. They go through seven weeks of training, uh, over eight tests that they'll take. Great. Tests on weather, tests on radio equipment, tests on flight maps, examinations on pilots' flight hours, and they go to sticks at the end of their training to test everything they learn in a tactical operations center. I'm allowed to work with instructors who've been in the Army close to their 20 years already, who have seen things that have changed prior to me coming in, and the students themselves ask questions that bring up things that gets my wheels turning and allows me to dig further into the knowledge. Details are so important in this MOS. So what it really teaches a soldier, not just in this MOS, but through the Army period, is to be attention to detail and know everything about your job. Army aviation plays a key role in all types of military operations. Ensuring mission success while maintaining safe flight operations takes a team of specialized soldiers. Coordinating aircraft movement for takeoff and landing, as well as tracking aircraft in flight, 
in both tactical and non-tactical environments is the responsibility of the air traffic control operator. Following procedures, rules, and regulations, soldiers working in this critical MOS are responsible for the operations of airborne flight traffic and airport ground traffic. They also assist in the installation and relocation of mobile tactical air traffic control facilities, process flight plan data, and maintain logs, records, files, and tape recordings of voice communications, and ensure the safety of pilots and passengers. The importance of this job, I would say, is everything. Just because we use air traffic, we use aircraft in almost everything that we do in the military. So keeping the aircraft safe, most importantly keeping the pilots safe, is a big job and very important. This career field requires individuals who have an interest in work requiring accuracy and attention to detail, the ability to remain calm in stressful situations, decisiveness while working within strict standards, have good voice communication skills, and an ability to work as a member of a team. You have to talk to aircraft, write down information, and listen to people talking to you at the same time. You get a bit of an adrenaline rush when you're trying to clear aircraft and get others off the runway, and there's a, a billion things going on. This job is very stressful, and if you cannot remain calm, you're not going to do well. After successfully completing Army basic combat training, you will attend 17 weeks of advanced individual training. There, you will learn radio operations and communication protocols, the use and operation of radar and aircraft management systems, takeoff, landing, and ground control procedures, and aircraft recognition. After completion of all training requirements, you will be eligible for worldwide assignments. As an air traffic control operator, you may have an opportunity to advance in your career through additional technical, tactical, and leadership training. This training coincides with training in the civilian world. You get the FAA certifications that you would in the civilian world, and it allows you to have the ability to have a short amount of training in the civilian environment. Where you may find employment at airports, traffic control centers, or a career with the U.S. Department of Defense. An essential member of the Army Aviation Team, the Air Traffic Control Operator, above the best. So 15 Quebecs go through approximately 16 weeks uh, worth of schooling and education. It consists of first phase is about four weeks worth of uh, CTO and then it rolls right on into four weeks of uh, fundamental tower instruction, then four weeks of fundamental radar instruction, followed by then one week of each piece of equipment that they will be using in the field. But once they get to their first unit and they actually start uh, getting into their niche, then they're really going to focus in on what task or tasks they're going to be expected to perform. Seek out what it makes you uncomfortable because if you don't and you you always stay in your comfort zone, you're never going to be, you're never going to find your limits and you just become complacent, you become stagnant. So seek out those opportunities to challenge yourself, really.
Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin momentarily. We kindly ask that you please silence all electronic devices at this time. Those wishing to take photographs during today's ceremony may respectfully come forward at any time. We ask that you be considerate of other guests and do not impede the graduates as they march to and from their seats. Please do not use excessive force when pinning your soldiers. Thank you. Finally, we are proud to offer a live stream of this graduation ceremony on United States Army Center of Excellence YouTube channel. The link will be posted on the battalion Facebook page. We will begin the ceremony momentarily once the live stream has started. Honorable Mayor Hayes, Lieutenant Colonel Norlin, Major Peck, Command Sergeant Major McAvoy, distinguished guests, family, and friends. On behalf of Captain Lauren Luna and First Sergeant Elena Hosley, the command team for Charlie Company 1st of 13th Aviation Regiment, and Master Sergeant Aramis Martin, the Air Operations Training Committee Chief, good afternoon and welcome to today's graduation ceremony. Over the last few months, the soldiers you see before you have entered and completed the second phase of their initial entry training by successfully completing the 15 Papa Aviation's Operations Specialist course and the 15 Quebec Air Traffic Control Operator course. The official party for today's ceremony is the Air Operations Training Committee Chief, Master Sergeant Air Miss Martin, and today's guest speaker, Command Sergeant Major Michael McAvoy, accompanied by Senior Drill Sergeant Christian Jimenez. At this time, I'd like to welcome Chaplain Nelson for the invocation. Following the invocation, please remain standing for the playing of the national anthem. There are so many traditions within our military, and one tradition that goes back hundreds of years, even before our nation was formed, was to seek God's protection before battle. That tradition continues in many ways through what we call an invocation. Invocations are offered by our military chaplains representing hundreds of religions, covering nearly every single ceremony that occurs within our ranks. Whether you hold to a particular faith or not, I invite you to join with me in prayer. Please stand. Let us pray. Lord, for the soldiers who stand before us, Today marks the culmination of months of hard work fueled by literal blood, sweat, and tears. Thank you, Lord, for being with them along every step of their journey. As they pin on their wings in just a few moments, may it be an everlasting reminder to them that they can do great things and that they can leave a lasting impact on this world. We are excited to see all that they will accomplish. As many of them step out and move on to their next duty stations, they enter into a new unknown. May they go forward with your peace, and may they experience your favor. We also ask, Lord, that you would bless their families, loved ones, drill sergeants, instructors, and all who have supported them throughout their journey to get to this place. No one walks this road alone. Graduates, God bless you and your families. And as always, Lord, we ask that you would be with our soldiers who are in harm's way during this very hour. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen.
Please be seated. At this time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker for today, Command Sergeant Major Michael McAvoy, who hails from Twins Falls, Idaho. He has been serving our country honorably for the last 28 years and is currently serving as the 1st Battalion, 13th Aviation Regiment Command Sergeant Major. Everybody hear me? Good. Good afternoon, Panthers. Yes? Woo, all right. I'd like to introduce you to our first of the 13th Aviation Regimental family. First and most importantly is my boss, right? Everybody has a boss no, where, no matter where you go in life. My boss is Lieutenant Colonel Jeremy Norland. A lot of folks call them uh, your battle buddy in arms. He actually swaps out uh, this June and we've spent the last two years together. So I'm, I'm very, very glad that he was a part of this um, and uh, glad that you get to finally meet him as well. Any questions you have about the Army, please direct them directly to him after we finish the ceremony. We also brought our executive officer, Major Peck. You, you met our chaplain. Uh, you'll see some of our drill sergeants within the formation, and most importantly, our guests of honor, the uh, graduating students, the 15 Papas and the 15 uh, Quebecs. Mayor Hayes, I'd like to thank you uh, for taking the time to attend uh, this ceremony. Principal Cruz, I know you're hiding in the back on purpose, but I, I'm really appreciative of you uh, letting us come to your backyard and do this. Uh, the students probably do not know this, but this took six months to actually get all the way until today. Uh, so it was a lot of legwork, a lot of trips. Uh, next time we've learned our lesson, we're just gonna use helicopters. We're not gonna drive here anymore. It's just way easier that way. So, and the, the, the cool factor obviously goes up. Uh, so why we are here is to show you what we do at Fort Novacell every single week. We produce the future of Army aviation and it's almost on every single week. Uh, our, the families for these soldiers are also in attendance, whether they're here in, in the actual crowd, which we're super appreciative that you made the drive, or they're uh, watching virtually. First, I know I'm cheating. Um, it's it's going to look like I put this uniform on just for you to pay attention to me. I got all the things, the 15 pieces of flair on my uniform that says, I'm important, listen to me. Okay. That is not the reason why we put these dress uniforms on and why these gentlemen have these uniforms on. It's to honor everything that they have done. You'll notice there are people in the crowd that are not wearing this uniform. They're here to also pay their respects for everything that they, they have achieved and what they're about to do from here, from here on. So why we are here is because we are a part of your community. You may not know, but the first of the 13 soldiers have been volunteering in your community since the 1980s. I have photos back in our battalion headquarters of us marching in parades in uniforms that I was never issued. Pretty old stuff. So in the last year, the first of the 13 soldiers volunteered 3,300 hours. I, I did the math. I didn't even sleep 3,300 hours last year. So uh, it's pretty impactful what we do in the community. We come to your football games. We march in your parades. We clean up your ballparks clean up your, ball, uh, your community centers, volunteer to clean up the properties of folks who can no longer care for the facilities themselves. This is not to recruit soldiers, or it's to create better humans, teach what giving back feels like, and to strengthen our community relationships. I can promise you what you are about to witness is the most important ceremony of these aviation soldiers' careers. Aviation is the only occupation that pins a badge on your chest. Let me tell you, there are 130 jobs in the Army that are available, and aviation is the only one at the end of your AIT you earn a badge. That's why it is so important. It sets you up for success for the rest of your life, whether you choose to serve in the military or not. That comes with a great responsibility and also has great financial benefits. An air operations specialist, the first video that you watched, uh, before, before they graduate, they have learned and de demonstrated 43 critical tasks and passed 10 no-fail exams, an STX and an FTX, basically a field training exercise and a simulation training exercise, all within seven short weeks. Don't worry, they get weekends off, they have their cell phones, they have Wi-Fi, they have their PlayStations. It's not all miserable, okay? It may sound like we cram it all in together for those seven weeks, but they do get time off. The air traffic controllers have learned 26 critical tasks, passed 13 rigorous tests, and also have an STX and an FTX, all within the span of 16 weeks. 
Both of these professions are some of the, tech, the most technically challenging you will find in the Army. If it was easy, you wouldn't earn wings and everyone would do it. Of course, while in the Army, all of these soldiers' college will be fully paid for. And if they choose to get out after their first term of only a few years, I will tell you how much they can earn as a civilian with their training. A 15 Papa Air Operations Specialist, the average income, annual income uh, in the United States is $76,000. That's $37 an hour. A 15 Quebec, an air uh, traffic control specialist, the national average is $100,000. That's $48 an hour. Right now, there's a 2,500 air traffic controller shortage across America. And you can tell that in the news because you keep hearing about aircraft running into other aircraft on the runways, which they're not supposed to do. Um, so that is obviously a profession that is very stressed and something that you probably barely have to drop a resume for when you get out of the military. The Army culture has always been one of diversity and inclusion. We have soldiers from Pennsylvania, Florida, Colorado, South Carolina, California, Texas, Michigan, Georgia, Nevada, Kansas, New Mexico, Puerto, Puerto Rico, Kentucky, New York, and finally, Virginia. Overwhelmingly, soldiers in this group stated that they chose to serve to jumpstart their careers while taking care of their families. We did have one soldier that lost a bet with a recruiter, and that's why he's here. And we did have another soldier that proved to be a troublemaker, and that's why he's here. But I won't pony, point either of these soldiers out to you. Soldiers, you have earned my utmost respect for choosing to serve. Less than 1% does this path. I am extremely proud of your accomplishments. Welcome to the Army Aviation family. Panthers, you have heard it here first. If you ever want to see what our community on Fort Novacell looks like, just ask your school. Principal Cruz has already been out to our footprint, as well as the mayor and many of your city officials. So we ask you to come out and see what we're all about. It's, it's not a bad time. Seek out your staff to schedule a visit. We have several events throughout the year, but you don't have to just wait to visit. Just remember, PT starts at 5 a.m. every day. And we have the friendliest drill sergeants around. Senior drill sergeant, please stand up. This is Senior Drill Sergeant, drill sergeant Imanes. He's our Senior Drill Sergeant, and this is him smiling. <laughs> senior Drill Sergeant, please have a seat. There are over, <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, a final thank you to the families because your commitment to your soldiers and our country does not come with a paycheck. And that is one of the greatest demonstrations of patriotism there is. The final portion of this graduation, you will hear the soldier's creed. These are the words that every soldier lives by, and by some even die following. If you have any questions of myself, our friendly drill sergeants, or any of our staff, you, uh, we have, we're going to keep them around after the ceremony. Congratulations to the graduates. Congratulations, Ferguson. <laughs> Swift and deadly, above the best. Fly Army. As a symbolic gesture that these graduates are now the future of Army aviation, each soldier will receive their aviation wings and branch insignia to be worn proudly on their Army service uniform. We ask that you please hold all the applause until soldiers' pings are wind. Distinguished honor graduate and honor graduate are titles right. bestowed Thanks. upon the top 20% of the class who have attained a first time go in all academic subjects. Their diplomas will be annotated to reflect the soldiers as the distinguished honor graduates and honor graduates of their respective course. The distinguished honor graduate for the 15 Papa Aviation Operations Specialist Course Class 24012 Papa is Private Haley Bennett. Private Bennett is assigned to the Kansas National Guard. The Distinguished Honor Graduate for the 15 Quebec Air Traffic Control Operator Course, Class 24001 Quebec, is Private First Class Jeremy Mahoney. PFC Mahoney is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Novacell, Alabama. The Honor Graduate for the 15 Papa Aviation Operations Specialist Course, Class 24012 Papa, 
is Private Second Class Michael Malian. PV2 Malian is active duty and is on assignment to Camp Humphreys, South Korea. The honor graduate for the 15 Papa Aviation Operations Specialist Course Class 24012 Papa is Private Second Class Ramon Rodriguez. PV2 Rodriguez is active duty and is on assignment to Joint Base Lewis McCord, Washington. The honor graduate for the 15 Quebec Air Traffic Control Operator Course, Class 24001 Quebec, is Private First Class Landon Castilian. PFC Castilian is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Novacell, Alabama. In recognition of their accomplishments, the Battalion XO will present an Army Achievement Medal to the Distinguished Honor Graduates and Battalion COIN, and a Certificate of Achievement to the Honor Graduates to each soldier for their achievements. At this time, please come forward and pin your soldiers' wings. The wings for the 15 Papa Aviation Operations Specialist Course Class 24012 Papa will now be awarded to Private First Class Patrick Amagashi. PFC Amagashi is assigned to the Washington, D.C. National Guard. Private First Class, Cassandra Bunker. PFC Bunker is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. <coughs> Private First Class, Jose Rosario. PFC Rosario is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Drum, New York.
Private First Class Mark Stewart. PFC Stewart is active duty and is on assignment to Wiesbaden, Germany. Private First Class Dylan Thomas. PFC Thomas is active duty and is on assignment to Camp Humphreys, South Korea. At this time, please come forward and pin your soldiers' wings. Private First Class Elijah Wessler. PFC Wessler is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Private Second Class Robert Barrientos. PV2 Barrientos is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Riley, Kansas. Private Second Class Elian Giles. PV2 Giles is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Liberty, North Carolina. Private Second Class Vincent Stanfill. PV2 Stanfill is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Liberty, North Carolina. Private Second Class Jordan Watson. PV2 Watson is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Stewart, Georgia. Private Derek Rodriguez Torres. Private Rodriguez Torres is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Bliss, Texas. At this time, please come forward and pin your soldiers' wings.
The wings for the 15 Quebec Air Traffic Control Operator Course, Class 24001 Quebec, will now be awarded to Specialist Krishad Ferguson. Specialist Ferguson is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Novacell, Alabama. Private First Class Samuel Lias. PFC Lias is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Novacell, Alabama. Private First Class Ezequiel Salceda. PFC Salceda is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Novacell, Alabama. Private First Class Derek Horn. PFC Horn is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Novacell, Alabama. Private Second Class Dusenge Jean Chrysostom. PV2 Jean Chrysostom is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Carson, Colorado. Private Sean Crosby. Private Crosby is active duty and is on assignment to Fort Novacell, Alabama. At this time, please come forward and pin your soldier's wings. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in another round of applause for these graduates receiving their wings and insignia today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Soldier's Creed. The words can be found in your programs. The Soldier's Creed! I am American Soldier! I'm a warrior and a member of a team. I serve the people of the United States and live the Army values. I will always place the mission first. I will never accept defeat. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained and proficient on my warrior tasks and drills. I always maintain my arms, my equipment, and myself. I am an expert and I am a professional. I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemy of the United States of America in close combat. I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life. I am an American soldier. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Swift and deadly!